In the name of Jesus Christ, good morning and welcome. As we come together in the name of our Lord this day, a few announcements to share with you. Wyckoff is still collecting clothing for their clothing drive this week, and if you have bags of clothes you would like to donate, you can bring them down to the Wyckoff Community Commons, which is the old elementary school down in Wyckoff. The first day that they will open the drive for folks around the whole area to come and, and, and look and take the clothes that they want will be this Saturday from 10 until 2 p.m. Great, thank you so much, Diane. Also on October 28th, Saturday, October 28th, is Brownsdale's Cream Chicken and Biscuit Dinner from 4.30 until 6.30. So if you're looking for a good meal on the 28th, head over to Brownsdale and have a delicious meal and some fellowship with great friends. Are there any other announcements or joys or concerns? Yes. Wanda Evans, thank you. Let us come together in the name of our Lord. Stiff-necked is one of those descriptions that we don't use nearly enough. Our focus this week might seem harsh. It might also lead us to point fingers at those out there or over there who are stiff-necked. Rarely do we realize that we are the ones in need of a neck massage. <laughs> to be honest, we are some of those who make light of the invitation at times. We are those who attend, but don't bring our wedding garment. Don't enter into the spirit of the call to discipleship. We are often half-hearted at best. So today, let our worship be our opportunity to re-engage, to recommit to the journey of discipleship. In our gospel reading today, Jesus describes kingdom living as a wedding feast, a party of commitment and promise and enduring joy. Yes, the parable speaks of the seriousness of this invitation and about the punishment dispersed for missing out or making light of the call. But we are not the ones who determine the punishment we are not the ones who cast out those who don't fit in. That's not our job. Our task is one of invitation and celebration, of grace and openness, even as we live out a life bound by the love and the law of God. Our job is to invite the world to the wedding banquet. We must show this by our hospitality and our grace, that we understand the depth of the call to be people of law and love. The community then will come alongside. We are to boost one another up when needed. We are to take turns at stepping up, and we must find ways to work side by side showing the neighborhood that we are producers of the fruit of the kingdom. May our worship today be reorientating as we find our way back again and again. And let us always remember to come back so that we can continue on for that long haul. And we have a great treat today as I invite the choir to come forward and share some special music with us.
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Will you join me in our call to worship? All rise. Come, now is the time to worship. When the Israelites worshipped the golden calf, God listened to Moses and chose to correct instead of destroy. Jesus tells a story of a wedding banquet where the guests dismissed the invitation and harmed the messengers. So the king invited people off the streets and welcomed all who received the invitation in earnest. God persistently invites us to return to God. Too often we turn from God's ways, choosing our stiff-necked insistence that we know what is best instead of trusting God's provision, love, and guidance. Come, now is the time to worship. We come to worship God, He keeps inviting us for the long haul. And we worship Him this day by uniting in our prayer for the day. Creator God, the world continues to chide. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Remind us, O oh God, that wherever we live, it is no longer foreign, but it is your land. Help us to honor this land as sacred. Gracious God, we do not truly honor and respect your creation as good stewards. Our failure to see that every human being is created in your own image. Our inability to sing the songs of Zion through our lips, hearts, minds, and actions. Merciful God, hear our humble confession that we have sinned against you by refusing to sing these songs of Zion. We confess that our silence with colleagues and friends of different colors, accents, or cultures is Powerful God, Grant us the grace, courage, and wisdom to be dynamic disciples of Jesus Christ, filled with the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Make us new and help us to remember and renew our baptismal covenant. So we might become your beloved community and the world we know, that we are committed to dismantling all kinds of atheism and the fabric of humanity. We commit ourselves to singing a new song, to sing the songs of Zion always and forever in our land. Amen. And let us join our voices in singing our praise hymn, hymn 352, It's Me, It's Me, O Lord. Stay. 
standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So if you have noticed after Pentecost and in ordinary time through the summer and this fall, we have been focusing our scripture reading on discipleship. And today we are continuing in Matthew, verse 22, 1 through 14 in the parable of the wedding banquet, which is another parable describing discipleship. Hear the words of the Lord this day. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their cities. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets, and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you like to come forward for children's moments with me a minute? You can come forward and sit with me a minute. Good to see you today. How's school going? Pretty good. Good. Are you in sports this fall? Uh, I was, but I didn't 
I stopped playing football. Okay, that's cool. Are you are you doing any trap shooting or anything like that? No. No, not this fall. That's all right. You enjoying school? No. Fantastic. So I got a question for you today. Are you ever invited to like a party? Do you ever get like invitations in the mail for someone's birthday party or something like that? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I, today what I just read was a story and it was about people being invited to a party. Like this invitation here, this party here is, is a birthday party for my nephew Dax. And the party will be on October 31st because that's when his birthday is. What else happens on October 31st? Well, you dress up, you get candy, Halloween. Yes, his birthday's on Halloween. And so they're having a birthday party at his house, and they put on the bottom here to RSVP. Do you know what RSVP means when you get that on an invitation? No. That means that the, the people who are inviting you, they would like you to let them know if you're going to come or not so they can prepare and be ready for you to come. So if they say, please RSVP, so we know if you're coming to the party, right? And then there's some parties that we get invited to that we really don't want to go to, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know, and we kind of make up those excuses, you know, I, like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I have a bad cold. I just, I'm not going to be able to make it to your party or or I got to take my cat to the doctor that day, right? And I can't make any kind of make excuses for the party. Yeah, and that's what Jesus was talking about today. See, he told a story about a king. And it was a parable, and a parable is kind of a story with a lesson. And this parable was a lesson about the king was God. And God had created this banquet for inviting people into his kingdom. And the first group of people that he invited, they started making excuses not to show up. And they had better things going on. And so God got mad, and then he said to his servants, which are the disciples, go out and invite everybody you see into my party, into my kingdom. Go out in the streets, no matter who they are, tell them everybody is invited. And so then they did, and then people started showing up and showing up and, 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 and wanting to RSVP and say that they would be there. And we're kind of some of those people that are sitting here today. They're showing up to God's invitation. And God's invitation is to come to church, and it's to come to Sunday school, and to read our Bible. And on the invitation, he also wants us to also invite other people to come in to what we call in the story a wedding banquet, but it's to come in and know who God is and learn about his kingdom. And that's what he's asking us to do today. So what I want you to remember this week is always take chances to invite your family and your friends. Come to church. Try it out and invite them to know who Jesus is in their life, okay? Should we pray? Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for Jesus, your son. We thank you for his invitation to come and receive the free gift of life which he offers without making excuses. And when we receive your invitation, we will say, yes, Lord, I will be coming. Amen. Thanks for coming out. Let us all come together this day in our faith hymn, hymn 398, Jesus Calls Us, verse 1 through 4. calls us o'er the tumult of our lives wild restless sea day by day his sweet voice soundeth 
saying, Christian, follow me. As of old the apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, turn from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for Jesus' sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the vain world's golden store, from each idol that would keep us saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. So as I asked in our children's sermon today, have you ever received an invitation to a party you really didn't want to attend? What did you do about that? I'll bet you didn't mistreat, abuse, and murder the mailman. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's what happens in this parable. And have you ever invited people to your party who did not attend? You cleaned, you cooked, you decorated. The table was set, the candles were lit. The music was playing and everything was ready, but some of the guests didn't come. Did it make you so angry that you killed them and burned down their houses? I don't think you did that either, right? Probably not. But that's what happened in this parable today. See, no doubt that what we read in today is a parable about judgment. But it may not be the judgment that we think it is. Speaking about the first group of guests, the king says those invited were not worthy. So by implication, those in the second invited group were worthy. Now we tend to get nervous and fearful when God begins making judgments because it leaves us wondering whether we're in the first group or the second group. Are we unworthy or are we worthy? And I suspect our nervousness and fear about God's judgments arise from the assumption that God judges us in the same way that we often judge others. And more often than not, our judgment of others are judgments of excluding others. Those who are living right versus those who are not. What if it's just the opposite with God? What if Jesus is trying to shock us into seeing that the kingdom of heaven is not business as usual according to our standards. What if? What if God's judgment on our lives is one of grace and acceptance and invitation, a judgment of inclusion? And if that's true, then what separates or distinguishes the first invited guests from the second. The difference isn't that one was more deserving than the other. The first invited guests were recipients of the king's invitation and favor, but, but so were the second invited guests. And so was the man who showed up without a wedding garment. They were all invited. They were all favored. And none of them had done anything 
to earn or deserve an invitation. It was just given. And if that's true for them, isn't it true for us? You see, the difference isn't that the king liked one group more than the other group. His sole motivation is to share his banquet. He wants someone, anyone, everyone to join in his joy and his celebration and be a part of his kingdom and life. Both groups were given the same opportunity. And if that's true for them, isn't it true for us? You see, the difference isn't that some guests are good and others are bad. There is no distinction or judgment made based upon behavior or beliefs or attitudes or even morals. To the contrary, with the second round of invitation, the king sends his servants into the main streets with instructions to invite everyone you find. And they did. They went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. And if that's true for them, isn't it also true for us? Now that's probably not the kind of social life that most of us live. But the parable is talking about God's kingdom, not ours. So what is it? What is the difference between those who were not worthy and those who were? There's only one thing that distinguishes the first invited guests from the second invited guests. It's their presence. They showed up. The second invited guests showed up. The first guests did not. The wedding hall was filled with the second invited guests. But the first invited guests would not come. That's the only difference between the two groups. The key to our life in God is to show up. And that's a lot easier said than done. To be present is difficult work. Think how difficult it is to be present for another person. It means establishing the other person as our priority. It means seeing them for who they are and not who we want them to be or think they should be. It means opening ourselves to receive their life into our own. It means the vulnerability of entrusting and giving our life to another. It means listening, really listening to what they say and not just what we want to hear. It means letting go of our own agendas and distractions and fears and prejudices. If we're not doing that with others, we're probably not doing that with God. Instead, we too often go our separate ways to our farms and our businesses. We're too busy, we're too tired, we're too distracted. We convince ourselves 
There's more important personal work to be done and there is money that needs to be made. And if we don't earn it or work for it, we assume it has no value. After all, you get what you pay for, right? We're convinced that we have better things to do and better places to be. That's what the first invited group did. What they did not realize And what we sometimes do not realize is that there is no life outside of the banquet, the kingdom. To show up and be present is to be worthy before God. It's that simple and it's that difficult. We don't earn or prove our worthiness as a prerequisite to entering the banquet. We show up, be present, and discover for ourselves the worthiness God has already known about us. That's when our life begins to change. So what about the guy who showed up without a wedding robe? This is about more than just a dress code violation. Something else was missing. It says he was speechless. It was as if he wasn't really there. And Jesus is reminding us that there are times when we show up, but we aren't really present. Our body is there, but we've kind of left the room and our thoughts are on other things. So here's what I wonder. What if this man had said something, anything? What if he had just made his presence known. Not so much to the king, but to himself. What if he would have said this? What if he would have said in response, I was hungry, and I smelled food, and I trusted you to feed me. I was lonely. I saw the lights on. And I trusted you to take me in. I was thirsty. I knew there would be wine, and I trusted you to give me a drink. I was naked. I knew people would be well dressed, and I trusted you to clothe me. I was sad and grieving, and I heard music and laughter, and I trusted you to share your joy. I was empty. I saw abundance, and I trusted you to fill me. I was dying. I saw the door was open, and I trusted you to give me life. What if he had said any one of those or a thousand other things like them? I think it would have been enough. He would have shown up with all that he was and all that he had. He would have been present. Then the king, I'm sure, would have said to him, Oh, my dear friend, I'm so glad you got my invitation. I'm so glad you're here. You are worthy. You are worthy. And if that's true for him, 
then isn't it true for us? The banquet in this parable represents the free gift of salvation made available to all. The invitation to the banquet is for all people on earth. And the sad truth is that many make excuses. And people don't accept God's gift because they are in pursuit of money and responsibilities and relationships that stand in the way. And Jesus wants us to know that while the invitation is for everyone, we have to accept the invitation to be with him at his banquet. We have to RSVP. Today, I share with you an invitation that you are invited into God's grace. And may your schedules be open to accept this gift. Let us pray. Father, we are your people, chosen by you. As we meet together in this place, help us to listen to understand and to remember. Make us aware that we are meeting not simply with one another, but we are meeting here with you. Let your presence be real to each of us. As we pray, may it be just like speaking with you. As we listen, help us to concentrate so that we really hear your word. And help us to take in and retain all that we hear, see, and experience this morning. Hear our confessions of those things we have done. Hear our confessions of those things which we not, ought not to have done. And hear our confessions of what we could or should have done in a different way to better reflect who you are in us. Lord, we raise to you this day our neighbors in this community you have created. Lord, we raise to you little Mason Meyer. And we raise to you the family of Wanda Evans. Please be with them. Know they are in our hearts. Hear now our praise and thanksgiving for your blessings and unearned grace. Give to us your true love so we may go into the streets and share it with all we meet. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward as we share our gifts with our Lord and Savior.
is God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Mighty and righteous God, as we bring our offerings to your altar, we confess we see ourselves in the stiff-necked Israelites in the wilderness. We are quick to lose sight of you, especially when our focus is turned in the direction of gold. Your anger and disappointment are so justified. And as Moses intervened for the Israelites, Jesus has advocated for us with his very life. Help us to keep our focus as you light the path you would have us walk. We pray this with gratitude for your love and in the name of your Son, our Savior. Amen. Let us come together in our departing hymn, hymn 368, My Hope is Built. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope to stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteous us alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. May you go knowing that God invites you today and every day to partake in the abundant life and love God has for you. So may we receive, honor, and celebrate the grace that softens our stubbornness and opens our hearts to share God's love with one another. Amen, and God bless your week.